Version 4.3 was a tremendous occasion for Genshin Impact as it marked the release of the first Geo character in almost two years, Navia. With the more ambitious design ideas brought on with the advent of Fontaine, players were very excited to see if Geo would have a resurgence back in the meta after being irrelevant for the entirety of Sumeru. Not only did Navia prove to be an extremely competitive damage dealer, but in version 4.5 there's yet another Geo 5-star unit to be released, Chiori. That's two Geo characters nearly back to back and both of them are 5-star as well. In addition to analyzing Chiori's gameplay, I want to revisit the Geo element as a sort of follow-up to my video back in 2022 voicing my criticisms about how it was handled. Is this a return of Geo, or are we still a long way from equalizing the 7 elements? Chiori is a character who came out of nowhere, though Kirara briefly mentions her in her voice lines and we got to see Chiori in 4.3 as a background character, she's one of those units with no prior exposure, which definitely doesn't do any favors for her in terms of overall appeal. Mind you, that's not a crippling disadvantage, Yelan was another such character who prior to her drip marketing was basically non-existent, and she became one of the most popular and powerful units in the game. That said, the deck is stacked against Chiori's release. The point fives have sort of a stigma for being the black sheep of every version, with nothing particularly interesting happening as it takes place following the Lantern Red event. If you guys recall, back in 3.5, that's when we had Dia, and we all know how that turned out. All things considered, Chiori does make a very good first impression. Right away, she has a captivating design and thought-provoking background, being a seamstress in Fontaine despite her Inazuman origins, and she plays out every retail worker's fantasy based on how she treats Turkish customers. Not only that, but from her trailer and ability showcase, she has gorgeous animations that are made only more eye-catching by the fact that she wields two swords, and you know how esteemed dual wielders are in the eyes of anime fans. But her good premise and visual design obviously means nothing in terms of viability. How does she hold up in that front? The best way to summarize her gameplay is that she's reminiscent of Albedo in terms of playstyle, a quick swap damage dealer. This means you can technically play her both as a main or sub DPS, but there are parts of her kit that incentivize her to play a more backseat role. In a way, it's not that different from how Navia plays out. Chiori's skill lets her dash forward and damage all enemies around her, while summoning her doll to aid the active character in battle. If there happens to be a Geo construct on field, you get to summon two of them, and they randomly attack enemies nearby for a chunk of damage. It's here that things get a little strange. First, take notice of her scaling, attack, and defense. Not the first time we've seen Geo units scale out defense, but at the same time, we've never seen it done like this before. Shinya's damage is mostly attack, unless you count the weird way they were to C6. Meanwhile, Noel and Ito scale off attack, it's just their defense directly turns into more attack. Chiori, on the other hand, has split scaling, with a portion of her DPS coming from attack and the other coming from defense. Split scaling, or hybrid scaling, whatever you want to call it, can be extremely hit or miss. It's usually suggested, if not outright obligated, to have to spec into both types to get the most out of a character. However, if those attributes are mutually exclusive, such as Shinyan having to build defense to increase her tankiness while building attack to increase her offense, it can ruin any chances of the character being viable. If the attributes line up, like I'll hate them split scaling between attack and elemental mastery, two things that both contribute to DPS, it's a positive. Thankfully, Chiori is the latter, as not only do both stats directly contribute towards the DPS, but they're scaled in a way that allows you to still output good damage even if you lack the most optimal artifacts. Though I believe the best way to spec her is to still prioritize defense over attack anyway, is that you don't have to cringe about losing out on that attack if that makes sense. Anyways moving on, the other noteworthy aspect is her passive talent, allowing her to sequence either a normal attack or an additional press of her skill shortly after she teleports for an additional effect. When buffering a normal attack, she gains Geo Infusion for 5 seconds, allowing you to use her as a main attacker, but uh... To make it easy for you, 99.9% .9 of the time you'll just be double tapping her skill. When doing so, Chiori automatically sends the next party member forward, making this the first instance of involuntary swapping. For 8 seconds after, her dolls will issue a tandem attack against enemies struck that deal the same damage as her elemental skill. Up to 2 follow-up attacks can be cast this way. So, despite having a rather long 16 second cooldown, that's in exchange for effectively 3 casts, not including the autonomous attacks from her summons. That's basically the gist of her gameplay. You activate her skill swap to someone else by tapping it twice, and then get 2 more slashes plus 2 dolls that behave like traditional summons, damaging nearby enemies every so often, and rinse and repeat. Very simple. So she does depend on having a Geo construct on field, and sadly her dolls do not count as one themselves. Meaning, for you to play her optimally, you have to have at least one of the Geo character on field. Thankfully, you only need one Geo Construct to get the full effects on her, but this creates a problem. Right now, there are only six Geo Constructs in the game. Albedo's skill, Ito's Ushi, Chongli's pillar, Ningguang's jade screen, and Geo Traveler's skill and burst. Basically forcing you into mono Geo, because if the other Geo units are at all present, you'll need more Geo characters anyway. Take Chiori and Ito for example. If you're gonna be using those, you might as well have Goro with them, since why the hell not, especially if Goro is C6, thus being mono Geo. If you're thinking Chiori and Goro, both of them need one more person since Chiori needs a construct and Goro needs energy, so you'll be packing either Zhongli or Ito, again being Mano Geo. So essentially your main option on her is Mano Geo, and as we've established in the past, Mano Geo teams have 
you know, they've seen better days. The thing with Chiyori is that you can think of her as an albedo but with actual purpose, therefore being stronger and more efficient. Albedo's problem was that he was kind of just a bunch of random things put together. Plunging attack support, burst damage, elemental mastery, off-field damage, bonus damage from crystallized if for some reason you got C6. He had no direction. Chiyori has the same premise where she has excellent off-field damage and a quick soft burst, which by the way is just a nuke, that's all it does. The only difference is that she doesn't have all the extraneous stuff and is primarily focused on dealing tons of geo damage. In other words, she allocates her power budget more efficiently. On one hand, this technically means you can throw Chiyori in any team you want as her kit is just off-field damage. However, being a geo character makes it so she will almost never be the best choice, merely a good one. Even if you don't have a geo construct available though, she's still decently strong. So, in theory, you could build her alongside Navia for the sake of geo resonance to increase both of their DPS, as Navia's team allows for a flex slot. But ultimately, because Chiyori's base kick specifically requires a Geo construct to reach her ceiling, that implies she's intended to be used in Mono Geo. Now, if you manage to pull for her C1, then the activation condition for her second doll goes from having a Geo construct to simply having a Geo character. With this, she can reach full effectiveness in Navia teams despite the latter not having a Geo construct, subsequently becoming Chiyori's best team by far. But for this video, I'm mostly looking at her base version. This is where I find her to be a very conflicting unit. On paper, Chiyori is very solid. She has a great premise and playstyle. With this plus scaling, you can use any manner of weapon types for her as she scales off attack, defense, and crit. Off the top of my head, I can think of Vestering Desire, Harbinger of Dawn, Cinnabar Spindle, and Wolfang. Swords in general are very accommodating for its wielders as most of them are just stat sticks. You can use Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter, or naturally her Misugiri Katana, which is tailor-made for her, no pun intended. Bonus normal attack damage, elemental skill damage, and defense, with the first two effects doubling when dealing geo damage. Perfect for someone who makes liberal use of her elemental skill. If you're just starting the game and this is like the first 5 star you pull, she's very beginner and free to play friendly in that regard. It's that trying to make her useful beyond that point is, frankly, really difficult at the moment. Unlike Navia, Farina, Nivellet, and Xianyun who are engines for their teams in that the team starts and ends with them, Chiyori is a component that relies on a very outdated and inefficient engine. I guess if we continue with this analogy, she's like a brand new transmission for your car, except that car has a dying engine. Navia was a fantastic addition on account of her creating her own engine instead of being a mono geo character. She derives her power from the crystallized reaction, giving her the ability to make use of traditionally powerful supports like Bennett, Fischl, and Xingqiu. By extension, she can take advantage of modern supports like Farina because her engine is compatible. Chiyori's engine is mono geo, which hasn't been updated in years. Full disclosure, I'm not saying Mono Geo is unplayable, it's just not as good as it used to be in light of all the meta breaking that's been happening in versions 3 and 4. Where I'm getting at with this is that Chiyori's kit is sound, but her niche doesn't have the right units to help her realize her full potential. As it stands, she's a victim of poor circumstance. She was designed to be a companion DPS character, someone who shadows the on-fielder and does a ton of damage alongside them. It's not even like an option either, by double tapping the skill she automatically switches to another party member. Granted, you could always just switch back to her and then continue attacking, but there's functionally no difference between whether she's on-field or off-field, meaning she's more likely than not going to be used off-field. Even for a novice player, her moveset's easy to understand. She can make passable if not efficient use of a wide selection of weapons, so weapon-wise, she's good. And being an off-field skill-oriented character, her artifact sets are pretty self-explanatory. Golden Troop, Rahusk of Opulent Dreams. She makes no use of elemental mastery, nor does she really need that much energy either, as her burst only has a cost of 50, extremely cheap. The issue right now is that her party options are so limited. Geo's central problem is that the overarching playstyle of the element is homogeneity. The majority of its party is expected to be Geo, as evident by their construct mechanic and the fact that many of them scale of defense. Chiyori is effectively the first true Geo character to come out in Genshin in two and a half years, since Navia and Yunjin were not exclusively Geo, making Ito and Goro the first and last ones up until now. Yunjin and Navia are not Geo characters in the conventional sense. They're Geo elements, but don't subscribe to Mono Geo. I guess you can say my current thoughts on Chiyori mirror the ones I have for Shinyun. Both units tap into a niche that hasn't been tapped into for a very, very long time. Xinyun revived a niche by serving as the new engine, transforming any character into a plunging attacker. She doesn't have to wait for a new plunging attack specialist because she makes everyone a plunging attacker. Would it be nice if we had a plunging attack specialist who could really take full advantage of her? Of course. It would be interesting to see a cryo version of Shaw or a pyro one, but you don't have to wait for that and can use her right away. Bonus points for being Animo and a healer, synergizing well with Farina and having access to BB. Chiyori on the other hand is still waiting for her niche to be revived. Essentially what she needs is an evolved Mono Geo team. For example, Hu Tao's Double Hydro team began with herself, Zhongli, Xingqiu, and Yelan, which is kept up rather nicely for the better part of version 3. But to keep up with the advent of new units in version 4, her Double Hydro team was evolved to Navi Yelan, Verina, and Jin, or Xianyun, either or. That's what Chiyori needs. She's the first of a new generation of Geo units. We need one more character, at the least. 
It's clear that Geo is and forever will be the monolith element, with its units prioritizing uniformity and brute force as their main line of attack. As proven with units like Navia and Nivellet, it's entirely possible to make a viable team composition whose DPS doesn't hinge on elemental reactions. You just have to make sure the base numbers compensate for that. Chiori has that modern power scaling in her kit. When sufficiently built, her skill and burst can output substantial damage, and through constellations, she can be even more effective. Her C1 increases her attack range, her C2 summons another puppet that can attack nearby enemies, her C4 lets you summon up to 3 of those C2 puppets, and with C6, her skill goes from a 16 second cooldown to a 4 second cooldown, letting you turbo spam it like crazy, in addition to her turning into an on-field attacker with that 235% defense scaling. Chiori has an awesome premise. She's the first mechanist unit we have in Genshin. Literally, she creates mechanized automatons that fight alongside her. I believe both free-to-play players and whales will really enjoy being able to use her if there were just more units to work with. What we need are new Geo characters with power scalings and abilities that line up with the modern expectations of the game. For those of you who saw why no one plays Ito, you may recall me talking about how his main issue is that for all the sheer power and strength that lay dormant within his kit, he doesn't have a full team to realize that potential, forcing him to settle for a suboptimal team in himself, Albedo, and Goro purely for the sake of there just being no alternative for that specific niche. Having mentioned a few minutes ago that Huta was able to maintain herself as a strong DPS unit thanks to new supports like Yelan and Brina indirectly buffing her in version 2 and 4 respectively, the same would be excellent to happen right here. Let's say there's a new Geo character who basically serves as a 5-star version of Goro, not unlike how some consider Yelan to be a 5-star rendition of Shinsho. This can kill two birds with one stone. It gives Ito the proper support he's been so desperately waiting for, while at the same time giving Chiori a solid incentive to be pulled, as Mono Chio 2.0 would now be Ito, Chiori, and that new support. This might be a hot take, but I think Chiori would have been a lot more appealing to players if either Navia was Mono Chio, or if Chiori came out in 4.7, 4.8, or even 5.0 or 5.1, and a stronger Mono Chio support unit came out in 4.5 instead. The only people who want to pull for her are Ito and Navia mains. You really have no reason to get her otherwise, but even for Navia mains, despite her being a straight upgrade over other potential Geo pairings at the moment, it's not significant enough to be game-breaking. Not yet, anyway. With the Hypofontaine having run its course and Lantern Rite finishing as well, Genshin's about to enter its off-season period again. So I feel as if many will write her off as a filler unit to skip, especially with a certain hotly anticipated character that's expected for the next version. But that's what frustrates me. She's really cool and looks like a ton of fun to play. If circumstances were just a bit more favorable for her, people would definitely give her more attention. I suppose to wrap things up since I'm rambling at this point, my final thoughts on Chiori is that she's not a bad character by any means. It's mostly that she's trying to cover two bases at the same time despite not being able to on her own. She's trying to be a workable sub-DPS for Navia, but that's gated behind her C1, and she's trying to be a workable sub-DPS for Ito, but Mano Geo needs to be updated. So it goes back to the whole thing about Chiori, base version at least, lacking an engine, or rather an up-to-date one. If Genshin releases more Geo units to modernize the element's roster, then I can expect a lot of people to go after her. As someone who cares about every element being good in some way, I'm praying that Mihoyo has plans for more Geo units and that Chiori is not the last one to come out for a while. We're so close, Mono Geo is so close to being meta relevant again. Chiori is an excellent companion unit for Ito, we just need like a Goro with Faros on level power scaling and Mono Geo 2.0 will basically be complete. What are your thoughts on Chiori? Do you think she's secretly overpowered, perfectly average, or trash? Let me know in the comments down below. Apart from that, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter at VarsFam, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other character first impressions videos if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.